Let's go. 7.32C. Just in time, we got a unique opportunity today because I just released a tier list on Monday. So Val was like, okay, BSJ, we think you think you got our meta all solved for TI-11. No. No. You're not going to spoil the meta for anyone else. We're going to nerf or whatever. Some shit. So we got 7.32C. Let's check it out. Banana slam jam. Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Dota Plus, an app that gives you the edge when you load up into the draft. You can see your opponents and your allies' strengths and weaknesses along with the heroes they've played. But that's not all. You not only use this in your own games, but my favorite way of using the app is using it on the watch tab, getting constant updates on the meta by seeing what players in the highest MMR bracket are currently playing. So once I pull up the watch tab on the Dota client, I can just click game by game. Once I load into this game, I can get all stats for all 10 players in it. No matter what role I'm playing, I can get a little info on what the current meta heroes that these players are picking. I can load into another game and I can do it once again. So every time you pull up this overlay, the app gives you some insane features. It gives you player and hero stats. It shows their stats from the last three months, the games they've played, the MMR, the win rate, the XPM, and the GPM per match. You can also see their most played heroes, and there's a green indication if they've been successful with them, and a red indication if they've been losing with it. You can mouse over that indicator to see exactly what their win rate is and the stats on this specific hero, just in case you want to know even more. You can see the player lane and role info. You can see a link to their profile on Dota buff if you want to know more. You can see who they are queued with in case they are in a party. You get banned suggestions based on what the most likely hero the opponent is going to pick. And you get a matchups calculator that tells you whether or not your pick will fit in well against the opponent's draft as well as with your own. Check out the link in the description and download the app for yourselves today. Okay, so this is just a ton of bugs. Optimize Hal during night, literally lag the entire game. Neutral creep updates. The Mana Aura region nerfed, Mana Burn rescaled. Okay, from a flat 100. So this creep was basically a guaranteed win if you were playing Doom or Chen or Enchantress. Item updates. No longer has a health activation cost. Uh, I believe it was 10% prior. Uh, still think Leshrac's the only hero that builds this. Refresher Orb now shares a cooldown with Refresher Shard, so no th triple ultimates. Cooldown no longer ticks down while in backpack. Oh! Huge nerf to Refresher as like a seventh item. That's kind of cool. Okay, I mean, they've been nerfing Refresher. They, they keep saying, guys, stop buying Refresher BKB on every hero ever. I mean, it's still going to be bought, guys. You know, these BKB Refresher offlaners, but they need to buy mana items to enable it, and you have to keep it in your inventory at all times. Here's the part that we get to compare against our tier list. Axe, I had low D tier. Base damage increased by three, and Battle Hunger talent buffed. So the reason why Axe was D tier was that his laning stage was way too fragile, and if he got out of laning phase, it was actually pretty good. Uh, he had a high win rate in low brackets and low win rate in high brackets because of this. So yes, certainly addresses that. I would leave him now at C tier. Batrider, we have this hero at S tier, absolutely freaking busted. So they nerfed Sticky Napalm pretty significantly in the mid to late game. 100 cast range on a spell like that, that's all about kiting. Okay, pretty big nerf. Say he's still A tier. Bloodseeker, not big enough nerfs to talk about. Bounty Hunter, I had mid C tier. Uh, he also got buffed. So three for three so far. Brewmaster, we had him mid D tier. He has been buffed. Okay, four for four. We had Broodmother, mid to low C tier. Buffed, easy. Chen, we had S tier. Bonus damage from Holy Persuasion, drastically nerfed. Especially level one, f half as much. Health regen bonus, nerfed. Five for five. Darkseer, we had him at mid to low C tier. We should be seeing a buff. Surge has been buffed. Talent, buffed. Easy six for six, baby. Dawnbreaker, we had, we had top of B tier, so probably a slight nerf. Movement speed during Starbreaker is now decreased. Oh, that is a nerf. And healing from heroes on Luminosity, decreased. That's a nerf. Death Prophet, we had Absolute S tier. Get this hero out of my games category. This is my get out of my games category. Cooldown increased by one second. Good start. Spirit Siphon Recharge increased at all levels, especially max level. And Exorcism, less movement speed. Bam, seven for seven. Drow Ranger, uh, we had high C tier. So slight buff expected. 
Base movement speed by five. Eight for eight. It's fine. Elder Titan. We had him at top of D tier. Shard now also reduces cooldown by two seconds. I'll consider that one being wrong, because if I put him at bottom of D or mid D tier, then he's he's supposed to get buffed more than that, according to me. So eight out of nine. Enigma, S tier, get out of my games. And Eidolon's magic resistance decreased by Okay. Very good. I can kill them in lane. Midnight pulse. Damage reduced. Very good. And less Hethon at 15. We can actually burst this guy, maybe. Let's go. Still gonna be a good hero, but a nine for ten. Phases Void, we had him in top of A tier. Shard bonus, less. Time dilation, less. So it's not a 1.1 wonder anymore. And nerf the talent, and nerf- This is a big nerf, actually, because this one helps you solo kill people in Chrono. We'd put him at a solid, correct assessment, BSJ. 10 out of 11. Grimstroke, we had him... Bottom of D tier. Ooh, bottom of D tier, Grimstroke. Travel speed increased, travel speed back increased. Um, so whenever it lasts the full duration, it returns to him, and then you can throw it out again. So that's gonna allow him to, like, chain people better. I'll say we're wrong on that, because that's not a huge buff, as far as I'm concerned. But I could be wrong about the fact that that's not a huge buff. So, Gyrocopter, we said he was in F-tier. F-tier Gyrocopter. Cooldown by 2 seconds, mana cost by 10. They still didn't buff the range, so I'm not even gonna say I'm wrong, because it looks like they were trying to buff this hero, but I... I think the hero's still g -g -g garbage, so we'll say I was right, 11 out of 13, but still garbage, I think. Maybe with Io. Maybe. Keeper of the Light. We had him in bottom of C tier, so yes, slight buff. Lich. We had Lich in bottom of C tier, so we should be expecting a s small to medium buff. Base health regen by 0.25, and talent increased. We'll consider that one right for the sake of it, 13 out of 15. Lena, we had her in A tier, so hopefully a nerf. Base armor reduced by one, and talent by five damage. I'm gonna say we were wrong then, because A tier, that doesn't seem like enough. That doesn't seem like enough. Lion, we had him in F tier. Cast range on Hex by 50. I'm gonna say that I'm right for this one, because Lion's still not gonna get picked, and they know it, but he's like broken in low-level pubs, so... Magnus, bottom of C tier, expecting a slight buff. Ooh, level one shockwave damage to help secure CS, better laning phase, and a buff to the talent. Boom, correct. Marcy, we had her in bottom of S tier. S tier, we're expecting a little plow into the fucking ground, baby. Marcy, throw distance less, can no longer pull units out of three minute long cooldown ultimates. Very cool. Rebound is significantly nerfed early game and about the same max level. Unleash movement speed, slow, and attack speed, slow, no longer pierce BKB. That's a pretty big nerf. Let's freaking go. We'll take a correct ding, ding, ding on that one. Meepo, we had him at top of D tier. We're expecting some big things for Meepo here. Shard buffed and dig buffed. Okay, we're going to call that one wrong, but maybe just because of Smurfs. Nature's Prophet, we had him at... Middle C tier. Mana cost were decreased from... Okay, slight buff. Very good. Cooldown decreased. Let's go. Middle of C tier. Now maybe top, top of C tier. Night Stalker. We had him at bottom of C tier. Mid to bottom C tier. Cooldown slightly reduced early levels. Let's freaking go. Pew. Slam dunk. Uh, Omni Knight. We had him at middle of C tier. Despite his high win rates and pubs, he's probably going to get nerfed. But I was doing this for TI, I'll, I will make that excuse. He got nerfed, guys, but, like, it's only because he's broken in pubs. I think he's, like, still middle C tier in, pub, in, in competitive, but, you know, that's fine. We'll count that as wrong, but we already knew we were going to be wrong because I just go against the grain, you know? Okay, Oracle. We had Oracle in top of D tier, so we're expecting something big. Min duration increased, max duration increased. Honestly, that's pretty good for the landing phase. That's especially good for the landing phase. We'll call that a slam dunkarooski. Out world destroyer. We had him literally the bottom of the tier list. The, we had him in the complete dumpster, my friends. Complete and utter dumpster. Astral Imprisonment level 1 in lane, especially. I mean, early levels. Has been lowered in cooldown, so... Not enough. We'll call it that I'm wrong. I think the hero's still really bad. Phantom Assassin. We had Phantom Assassin in F tier as well. Very good. Expecting big things for Phantom Assassin. Turn rate improved? Cool. Attack speed bonus? Slightly improved. 
The fact of the matter is, PA's win rate in low MMR pubs was still about 50%. Her win rate in my bracket was like 46 lower percentage. And so I had her an F because I didn't think we'd see her much. I still don't think we're going to see her much, but you never know. Gork still picks her, but Spirit Lance, we had PL bottom, mid, middle of D tier. Middle of D tier. So we're expecting some buffs here. It feels like he's the weakest of the illusion heroes. Cast range on Spirit Lance. Spirit Lance. Increased in lane, that actually helps secure range without like walking up and getting poof. And then movement speed slow, increased especially in the lane. Okay. That extra 1% when I have the shard, very good. Uh, we'll call that a win, but I think he's still probably bottom of C tier, if that. Primal Beast, we had him at middle B tier, so wouldn't expect slight nerf. Passive bonus damage decreased. Very good. Level 1 nerf, mostly. Pudge, we had him at mid-A tier, so a little bit of a nerf coming in hot. Talent spell lifesteal reduced by 2%. That is pretty important for core Pudge, to be fair. But if I put him in mid-A tier, that's not enough of a nerf to warrant them thinking that he's a middle-A tier. So I will count myself wrong. We have Pugna, bottom of C tier. Damage per mana increased especially level one maybe core pugna's back you can go the whole 441 build this definitely buffs it a lot uh the 441 build so middle of c tier that makes sense okay that makes sense we'll consider that easy pickings ricky we had him in the dumpster of the dumpsters fifth worst hero in dota is what i had radius on smoke screen buffed level one well this hero does go 144 very similar to pugna where this ability only has one point in it until like level 13 so this is a buff they also fixed his apparently his blink strike wasn't working properly i saw that in the notes so he's probably in a solid mid d tier now uh at the herald bracket he will be a tier as dust is a myth rubik we have bottom of the b tier so maybe a slight nerf Add an indicator for land ability to preview, preview where the unit will actually end up. Ah, oh, I mean, that's a quality of life buff. Middle of, or bottom of B tier, that's literally the middle of the tier list. So, perfect. Nailed it. We'll call that easy. Sand King, we had him in F tier. F tier. I mean, the reason why Sand King, I have F tier is I feel like there's just better heroes. So, they buffed Caustic Finale, very similar to these other two heroes, where he only goes one point Caustic for most of the game to be 14% slow. Honestly, maybe relevant, but low C tier at best. But uh, I will say I was wrong about this prediction because that's not very much. Shadow Demon, we had him in bottom of C. You know, it felt like he's a situational, but not the most popular. Cooldown decrease. Let's go. That's good. Reflected physical damage now bypasses damage block. Let's freaking go. Talent. 12 strength. That's actually a big deal for a hero that uh, backline support that you want to burst. So let's freaking go. Bottom of C tier. That hero maybe maybe even top of uh, top of C tier now. Honestly, Shadow Demon is one of those heroes at TI where sometimes you just don't see him for the first three days. And then by the main event, he's just picked every game. So quite possible. Always a conceptually very strong hero that scales very well because of percent based spells. Shadow Fiend. We have him in bottom of A tier. Stacking movement speed slow nerfed. I would say that's not going to make us correct because that while that was a very important part of his kit, doesn't seem like much to me. I might be wrong. Still strong in the side lanes. I think he's still going to be probably top of B tier. Probably top B tier. Uh, level one significantly worse. Silencer. We have Silencer in F tier. I'm sorry, guys. I know the, the, the Heralds and the Crusaders and the Guardians. I know all of you out there are thinking, BSJ, this hero freaking wrecks. But just letting you guys know, there are about 15 items in Dota that can remove his abilities. You just have to buy them, okay? Base armor increased by one. Wow. Cue out the memes with the, he's unkillable. Drow, hit the silencer. Oh. Now applies instant burst damage. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, that's a pretty big buff. I'll say I was right about that one. Let's go. I will say I was right about that one. That makes him better against players who buy items that remove his spell, because uh, it actually does damage, at least. Slardar. Middle of D tier. Middle of D tier. Bonus river move speed up. Stun duration on bash. Ooh, level one. That's significant. I'll, I'll consider myself correct there. Those are some pretty nice buffs for Slardar. They also nerf the other offlaners. I will say that Lotus Orb right now is a very hot item. It's all the tits. And Lotus Orb completely destroys Slardar. Just... Everything about Slardar is countered by Lotus Orb. His entire kit is physical damage, 
and he's all about either him bashing you for physical damage, which Lotus Orb gives armor, or him amping somebody and then his teammate killing them, and the Lotus Orb can remove amp, so... Yeah, uh, buy Lotus Orb if you're against Slardar. Slark! We had him in middle of A tier. We had just given him promotion just in time for Depth Shroud to get nerfed. And Dark Pack cooldown talent also nerfed. Man, I don't like that nerf because now that talent's just so bad. You probably take it still, but it feels so bad. You probably take the talent later. I don't know, it's still... Nah. It is a pretty big deal, though, because Dark Pact has a 1.5 second channel time, a 1 second duration, so it's 2.5 seconds, so it goes from being 2.5 second downtime to 3 second downtime, which is actually a pretty big deal. It's like a decently larger window to actually stun him. Uh, but yeah, I'll say I was correct about that one. These are relevant nerfs because this hero's utility is what makes him good right now. Um, so Death Shroud is a big part of his kit. Remember that this is a radius, which means to calculate the area, you must square it, guys. You must square it, so it is much smaller. Spearbreaker, we had him in... Uh, I think a lot of people in the comments disagreed with our rating of Spearbreaker. We had him high C tier, but I would say that means a slight buff, right? Like, he's still below average. Cast point on charge improved. That's actually a big buff. Scepter no longer improves cast point, okay. That means he, the Valve probably put him at, like, bottom of C, you know? That's like a... It's a pretty nice buff. Uh, I actually, I, I think he's one of the best melee force against, I guess he was good against a lot of the meta heroes and those are going to change. So it's hard to gauge him. I think he's pickable at the very least. Techies. Uh, we had him at top of D tier. Bonus movement speed on reactive taser. I'll say I was wrong about that because top of D tier, that's like at least a decent buff and that is not a decent buff. So Tidehunter, we have top of D tier. We're going to need some love here, Tidehunter. Damage increased by 50 at all levels, and the Gush debuff duration by 0.5. That's pretty relevant in lane, I'd say. I'll count that correct. Those are some nice quality of life buffs for Tide. And you have to remember that these annoying ranged guys in the offlane got nerfed. So it's just the rising stonks of the melee boys. Undying. Now, if you were not living under a rock, you had queued at least a single Dota game in the last two months. You'd be fully aware that Undying is absolutely S tier, because... Uh, Unlike Bad, who takes a little bit of finesse, kind of understanding the limits of the hero, Undying, push Q. Undying, push Q. Occasionally push E. And then push R. And then walk. And you've done your job. So, better be some serious freaking nerfs. Decay, 100 mana level 1. Okay, that's a start. 4 decays is the old 5. Okay. Tombstone, zombie movement speed slow decreased, and vision decreased. Very relevant, especially in competitive Dota. The Tombstone does give 1,800 vision at night and day. Now it is only 1,500, but if you put it on a cliff, it was effectively a ward. Better than a ward. Wards, I believe, are 1,600, but now it is not quite as good as a ward. Um, I would say Undying is still going to be B tier, at least. Probably A tier. I don't think this is enough. I think Decay is still broken. You're just going to buy, like, two or three extra mangoes, which is relevant. Don't get me wrong. But still strong. Venomancer, we got middle of C tier. A little bit of buff expected here. Mana cost on Gale significantly reduced. A lot of times you only put one point in Gale. Like, you can sometimes put two if you're in, like, a kill lane. But in lane, this is significant. Because for someone like me, you know, with the philosophy that you miss every Gale you don't throw, I throw a lot of Gales. And they miss. So the 95 mana allows me to do that more freely. So thank you. Uh, that is a direct buff to BSJ laning Venomancer. That's actually a big buff, to be honest. Uh, you don't want to buy mana regen early on Venom. You just want to buy, like, Wraith Bands and trade with the opponent. Latent Toxicity. Cast range increased by 200. Projectile speed by a lot. Okay. Buff the Shard. I'd say we were right about Venomancer. He was buffed pretty significantly. Uh, for a low C tier hero. Viper. Movement speed. Oh, we have Viper in bottom of A. Bottom of A. We're expecting big nerfs to Viper. I am. I have been laning against Viper for like six months. Please, just stop. Movement speed slows per stack. Significantly reduced in lane. Thank you. Thank you. Most notably level 1 and 2. Um, I'd say the level 3 power spike for Viper was super obnoxious. The level 1, it's basically not even a slow anymore. So you can usually walk away from it. That's nice. Probably mid B. If they nerf his laning stage enough that he's not dominant, then he would be even lower. But Visage. We had Visage at uh, mid B. So a little bit of a nerf expected. A little mid B. Grave Chill. Cooldown by one second. Nice. 
Gravekeeper's Cloak, Radius, less. That means the radius for his birds. Okay, so his birds have to be closer to him. That's a huge deal. That is actually a huge deal. That is significantly smaller AoE. Um, shard max health restored by 10%. And movement... Okay, so I think they nerfed him way more than I would a mid-B tier hero. But his pub win rate was also insanely high. So that's probably why they nerfed him this much. But I'll count that as a win. I'll count that as correct. I, I said he should get nerfed. You know, it's okay. Warlock, mid to low C tier. Cooldown by 10 seconds. That's fine. We'll count that as correct. Wind Ranger. We had Wind Ranger at top of F tier. That was with the exclusion of Seb playing Wind Ranger. Bonus attack speed, increased level 1. And okay, they still apparently think Wind Ranger is viable somehow. I, I never see this hero in my games. Every time it's in there, it's not very good. So I'll say I was wrong based on the, you know, whatever, but still not a believer. Wraith King, last but not least, my friends. We had Wraith King at bottom of C tier. We're expecting big buffs. Damage by 15. Let's freaking go. And damage on Wraith Fire. And Skeleton Attack Damage Talent increased by 2. I would say, I mean, bottom of C tier and he got slightly buffed. Okay, we'll take it. We will take it, guys. We'll take that one as ending it on a note of positivity. So, that's my review of 7.32C. I've read it all out. Uh, I have updated my tier list as such. I will actually plan to update this exact tier list throughout the course of TI. So as I see things that change, we're kind of just going to use this as a basis. So if you guys want to know, I am planning to like follow along with the meta, anything that kind of like comes up, uh, heroes that I believe were like underrated or overrated or whatever. I will be significantly updating you guys. If you want to make sure you follow the meta for all TI qualifiers, last chance qualifiers, group stage, main event, etc., etc. Thanks for watching guys. Bye-bye.